In this video, we look at modeling the curved door handle you see here on the left. Now, if you look at the curved handle here, there are no straight edges anywhere on it. And when you have to create these smooth flowing surfaces, you need to use surface modeling. And when we use surface modeling, if we want to get smooth surfaces, we have to use splines to create these surfaces. So organic smooth shapes require the use of surfaces not possible to do it directly with solids but we end up with solids at the end and to create these surfaces we'll use splines which are going to give us smooth continuous surfaces and curves Now the main stages in the process that we will go through in this exercise are as shown here on this screen we'll begin by creating a reference sketch to give us an idea of the size of the handle and we'll bring in sketch pictures from the side and the top. We'll use these sketch pictures to create splines. Now one of the interesting things about this handle here is this edge here on the front is curving in two directions. So we'll use the project curve tool in SolidWorks which creates a projected curve from two separate 2D sketches. We'll make use of symmetry when we're creating the model by observing that the handle is symmetrical about the right plane. So here is our symmetry line here or our silhouette line here and outline and we'll use that curve when we're creating our handle also. With surfaces we create them one at a time and we're going to use the loft to create the curved surface here and also at the front in conjunction with some guide curves. We will need to use a tool called split line as well where we're going to need to divide up the surface here at the front into a top and a bottom so we can loft between those edges. Sometimes when we're working with surfaces we need to create some construction surfaces so we'll have a surface extrude here at the end that we'll use to close off and give us an edge that we reference when we're lofting. A face fillet will give us a curvature continuous fillet here on the front. As we mentioned already the model is symmetrical so we'll use the mirror surface body to a mirror the front half over to the back uh, at the end and then we'll finally convert the surface model into a solid using the thicken command. So here's the reference sketch that we'll create first to give us an idea of the size of the handle. So it's 127 millimeters from the end to the center of the rounded part of the handle. This here is the projected edge here and this edge is made up of two separate 2D sketches. We have the side profile seen here in purple and then we have the shape of the curve when we look down at it on the top view and the projected curve tool allows us then to get the intersection in space of these two curves. So creating the curves is the key to creating these surfaces. So we'll go on and look at this now in SolarWorks. So here in SolarWorks, I've already drawn the reference sketch to save some time. This sketch is drawn on the right plane. And if I hover over the sketch here, you can see that it's referencing the right plane. If you want to turn that on, if you go up here and you right click on the file name, you see here dynamic reference visualization parent and dynamic reference visualization child. So that's one way to turn those on there. And then you can see when you click on a feature what it references. So our sketch here is currently referencing the right plane and also the origin. If we just have a quick look at the sketch, all it is is some circles and we've got a center line here. Our sketch is fully defined, but it doesn't matter whether it's fully defined or not. We're just using this as a reference to give us an idea of the size of our sketch picture when we bring it in. So it's 127 millimeters from the center line to the center here of the circles and the outer circle is radius 36 and this circle here on the inside is 32. So we'll begin by bringing in our sketch pictures. So we'll bring in the one from the side and we'll put it on the right plane. So we'll begin by opening a sketch on the right plane and then we go tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. So I'm going to go to my folder here and I'm going to place the view of the handle from the side 
onto the right plane. So I'll use the low re resolution recommended. Here's our sketch picture of the handle from the side. And as you can see, it's much bigger than our reference sketch. So we need to scale this down and we can use this reference sketch as a reference for the size. When you use the sketch picture, you've got the enable scale tool and that's this blue line here with the pink ends. So if I drag this over here and place it roughly there at the end, and then you can also rotate this, but we'll just drag it across the horizontal. And SolarWorks is going to pop up the reference size of this dimension currently. So SolarWorks is telling me that this is over two meters at this stage. And on our finished model, we want this to be roughly 145. So I'll type in 145 and SolarWorks will scale that image for me there. Now I can move this image around and I can just place this by eye here initially. If you want to scale it, you can just drag it. Now I'm going to turn off the scale tool now because I'm just finished with that. Now, if you want to, you can go over here to the properties and you can give it an exact width. So if I were to make this 147, make sure lock aspect ratio is ticked on. You don't want to distort the image. I'm happy enough with that there referencing the sketch reference. If you go down here to transparency, you have some options options here and maybe you want to get rid of the the white background so if you use the dropper here select the white background and then slide up the matching tolerance and slide up the transparency and we've now got rid of the white background there on our picture so I'll click OK on that if you want to rename this sketch you can So the side picture is housed in this sketch here. So we'll now do the same for the top plane. So we'll open a new sketch on the top plane. So here's the top view of our reference sketch. So once again, tools, sketch tools, sketch picture, handle from the top. And again, it's going to be much bigger than we need. So I'll use the enable scale tool just to quickly size this so it's again it's 145 and just drag that let's turn off the scale tool and again i'm going to try and center that bump up the transparency on the image there for a second so we can see our sketch so i've made the image more transparent so i can see my reference sketch and just drag this and again i'm just going to position this by eye so there's the point view there of the line on the plan I'm going to center that there so that looks okay if you want to get rid of the white background on this picture, you have to go use it to find again and use the dropper here. Click on the white bit. You need to look in perpendicular to, to do this. And I'll click OK on that. Let's rename our sketch picture. Two slow clicks. Now I'm going to change our background here to white now. So here are our two sketch pictures and we're going to use these now as a guide to help us create our curves here for the handle. I'm going to begin by trying to capture this curve here on the inside. Here it is here, because this is going to be the side view of our projected curve, which is going to follow this profile here on plan. So I'm going to exit our sketch here. So we'll just temporarily hide our picture there from the side. So I'm going to open up a new sketch again on the right plane and I'm going to concentrate on the side profile here for our projected curve. So we're going to use a spline here. Now at the right end, these points are actually on the circle. So I'm referencing just by eye here, picking some points on the circle there. So press escape or double click on your left mouse button to complete the spline. Now at the very end here where we want to reference this line here, I'm going to make this coincident with our reference line. Now I can move these endpoints up and down. Now these are the only handles I would move on this here, the endpoint handles. So just doing this by eye. I'll give this a distance here. So I'll go 2.8 and move that down there. Now I've got my control polygon on and I'll use that to move the curve to follow the shape that I want. So 
over here with these points around a circle and that seems to be following that circle there pretty okay so using my control polygon i can move my curve around and tweak it where you need to don't use the handles on these internal points use the control polygon if you need to insert more points you can always right click on your spline and insert spline point but i think i have enough points there so that's our sketch from the side that's going to be part of our projected sketch so let's exit that sketch so that's our side spline now let's create our top spline so let's show the top sketch which is here open the new sketch on the top plane and this time i'm following this edge here on the top so it's not the the widest point because there is a curve on the front surface so it's this edge here that we're going to follow so once again it's a regular spline i'm going to start here at the end of our sketch like this and now it doesn't matter that i go a little bit beyond the end in fact it's a good idea to overbuild your spline so let's go back and fine tune this here so if i click on the spline here you've got a handle here at the end and this handle i'm going to add a horizontal relation to it so if you click here on the diamond which controls the magnitude we can add a horizontal relation over here in its properties so let's add that horizontal relation you can drag the length of the handle if you want so again use control polygon and we're following that inner curve there again by eye so there is our spline view from the top and we're going to use this then to create our projected curve let's exit out of this sketch to hide the sketch picture just for a second so what we have currently let's hide also the picture from the top so i now have the spline from the side and i have the spline from the top and we're going to use those to create our projected curve. Now, oftentimes when you're working with complex models, it's a good idea to keep these splines at the top of your tree. And how you do this is not to use these splines to create your features. Instead, I'm going to use convert entities to make copies of these splines. So once again, on the right plane, let's open a new sketch. I'm going to select our spline here and I'm going to use convert entities and that'll give me a fully defined sketch there of our side profile for the projected curve let's do the same for the top but let's rename this first so this is going to be project curve side so I'll use that when I'm creating my projected curve so let's open a new sketch on the top plane here's our spline from the top and let's use convert entities on that and exit that so these are derived from the splines so let's go and create our projected curve now which is going to be a three-dimensional curve from these two so we've got a two-dimensional curve from the side we've got a two-dimensional curve from the top and we're going to get the intersection in space now of those two curves and this will give us a three-dimensional projected curve you'll find this on the features toolbar curves project curve so we have two options here sketch on faces or sketch on sketch in this case we're going to use sketch on sketch because i don't want to pick the spline so i'm just going to hide the spline and i'm going to select the convert entities curves so this gives us here then our projected curve which is three-dimensional it's curving when we look down on it so when you look at it on plan it's following our spline on plan and when you look in at the right hand side it's following our side profile so this then is an important part of our handle here your projected curve so let the software do the work for you so this gives us then our curve that we're going to use later on for our loft i'm going to go back and show our picture from the side again because i now need this to follow the outer profile here which is going to give me my symmetry line or my silhouette edge you know it's the widest point of our handle all around there 
So there's our projected curve. So I'm going to show the reference sketch and our side spline here. So once again, let's open a new sketch on the right plane and I'm going to create the outer profile using a regular spline. So I'm going to start here from the in point of this spline. And so once again, we're referencing points here on the circle. So once again, press escape or double click when you finish your spline. I'm going to make these two points coincident here. So again, as before, the only handle I would use here directly on the spline is the handles at the ends. So those are those two there. Rest of the time, use your control polygon and follow the curve there. Follow the, the sketch here because we're referencing our circle. Now if I look here, we can see that I might need to move these around just to get it to follow the circle a bit closer. You do have an option here to relax the spline and that would allow you to move point along the curve if you need to. So I'm following the circle there. Use control polygon. As before, if you need to insert more spline points, you can do so. And get a smooth curve following the outer profile. So this is going to be our silhouette edge which is the widest point of the handle and that's going to be on the symmetry plane. So this here is our center profile sketch. So I'm going to click OK on that and exit that. Let's hide our reference sketch and hide our sketch pictures which we're finished with. So now we have the center profile sketch here and we have our projected curve uh, from earlier and these now are going to be the basis of starting to create the surfaces for our handle. We'll continue with this in our next video.